hi welcome to another talk on creative confidence i'm teresa uh i'm doing this with right aligned in partnership with them and my guest today is the wonderful rebecca lloyd uh founder of this independent life a platform that focuses on women achieving independence through health work and money welcome rebecca thank you so oh, much for oh my god this. i'm so excited <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so, so happy that you're here. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, you know, what we've been doing, how you got to this independent life? A, a bit of background, please. Yeah. So um, I'll try, I'll give you the short version because it's been kind of a winding road, but I, yeah, I never really knew like what I wanted to be. And um, the road that got me to starting my own business was definitely a weird one. So I used to do science. I studied biomedical science. I also did art. Um, I was told actually to drop maths by my school because they didn't want me to bring the grades down. So like that was a whole other thing, but I always had this kind of love and passion for art and creativity but I also had this real love of science and I'd always been surrounded by that my mum was a nurse my granny was a botanist my granddad was a chemist like I felt like it was sort of in my blood so yeah I kind of went through I thought maybe I want to be a doctor I applied twice I got rejected twice so that didn't happen I tried working in scientific research but like it just was very niche <laughs> and I feel like mm. I needed the people like the human interaction like that kind of side of things and then yeah I tried loads of different things I worked in retail I worked for a language training and translation company I worked in marketing I worked in ski resorts for two years so I was a chalet manager actually oh, wow. in Austria so like I really kind of went wide um but then I really came back you know after kind of working in hospitality for a little bit and just sort of felt this kind of pull back to like science and mainly towards like helping people I think to be honest but again never, never really knew what I wanted to do and sort of really kind of fell into pharma I'd worked in the NHS as well when I was getting work experience for the whole like trying to be a doctor thing which ultimately failed but that gave me a real insight into like the other side of medicine that I think people often don't see and the kind of the rawness and the I don't know I guess just like how how complex it is right and how multifaceted that whole thing is and whether it's like human beings or whether it's a system or whatever it is I don't know but I sort of went back into pharmaceuticals and landed in pharmaceuticals which doesn't sound related but you know there's this real cold opinion of the pharma industry and the healthcare industry but it's also this very misunderstood industry I think I think there is a lot of understandably you know I can understand why people have certain opinions about it and I agree with that but I think it's also really understanding that when you're looking at healthcare and things that people are putting in their bodies you don't want to have something that's just been like not tested <laughs> properly and so it's like the money that goes into it I don't know and I think just really getting under the surface of all of that and being able to work I ended up working then in advertising so I was working in advertising again I never thought of advertising I didn't really know what it was I didn't really know what communications was. And I think it's sort of this hidden world when you look at healthcare, because unless you're in the US, where you have those like TV adverts mm. for medications, which is kind of questionable in my opinion, but that's, you know, for another conversation, you don't really get that in the UK. So it wasn't yeah. something I'd ever even heard. Someone was like, oh, have you thought about healthcare communications? I was like, what is that? But then when <laughs> I kind of ended up doing it, I was like, wow, this is like the perfect blend of design and creativity with like the science and the people. So I really thrived in that, honestly, and I loved it. And I worked for like a big omnicom agency at first. And then I was really fortunate to be hired to start the London office of an independent agency based in New York. So that was incredible because it kind of gave me the uh, I guess it gave me the platform to try out business and start mm. like something I'd always really been curious about but hadn't had the confidence to or hadn't really know what that meant or didn't know what that was going to be like I didn't know what I wanted that to be but I always had a sort of inkling like my mum had also had her own business when she gave up nursing to have us she ran her, her own baby sling business so I don't know I'd always been sort of inspired by that and she's like the most independent woman that I know you know period so I don't know I'd always had these kind of fantasies and thoughts about what I could do but I just didn't know what it was so being able to do that being able to grow the team like doing everything like operations new business leading all our kind of international teams and clients I don't know it was just amazing so that ultimately happened and then COVID happened. It sort of removed a lot of the things that I really loved about that job. Like the traveling mm. went away. I love traveling and 
the interaction with other people, like all the things that I really loved about the job, like the the growth and the nurturing and the organic mm. nature of just everything about it and the diversity and the variety that it brought just kind of all went away and you know in the spirit of transparency I basically had a breakdown and it all kind of came to a head and at the mm. same time I was so had been really more or less for two years been in chronic pain which then turned out to be endometriosis which was something that had taken me 10 years to kind of get to that point and then at the same time I was buying my first house which doesn't sound related but I sort of realized I had absolutely no idea how to manage my money so it was like all these big things were happening I was like questioning my career and you know I'd built my reputation and my network and everything was in this industry and what was I going to do like I had no idea it was also during COVID you know it wasn't the time to just be quitting your job and like going for a jolly so I don't know like all of that happened and that ultimately is what inspired me to start my business because I realized that it wasn't just me and I started speaking to more women and it's mm. it's for you know anyone that this can relate to anyone I think but I think for women particularly there are additional barriers that we have in place that are partly generational right like we mm. couldn't have mortgages or bank accounts as women until like the 70s we weren't in clinical trials until like the 90s like that's not that long ago so we have a lot of catching up to do I think and I think for women we can really in, you know it's very ingrained a lot of that it's very societal mm. and it's very systemic and it's very deep rooted so mm. yeah I don't know I um I just feel like why is it that we have to settle for less than what we want and why is it that as women we put ourselves to the back of the queue a lot of the time like why is it that we can't yeah. have the, the life that we want and that's not in like a wooey like you know mm. unachievable way it's a very practical way of like and that's why I use my sort of health work and money that you mentioned because for me people were like you're crazy for quitting your job but you know you were so successful like all of this but yes I was earning amazing money that I never thought I would earn yes I was running you know a London agency and that was amazing but my health was completely shot like I was broken as a human being and I don't know it was just that real kind of visceral experience and just feeling like I need to change something but I don't know what that is and so yeah I won't we'll go into it but confidence was a huge part of that whole thing so yeah that was a bit rambly but <laughs> no 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 it was, it's a, that's the thing it's it's just so important to know I, I think that first you know peek into your life and what what took you where you are now and because you know that this is it's not easy but as you said it's not easy being a woman <laughs> and it's not easy like being in a you know f you know f a founder deciding to go for for your own thing so you know quitting something that is like uh secure and you know kind of on paper looking great but that is you know in the long in the long run um really really impacting your life and making you, yourself feel worse and yeah yeah I mean I'm so curious to carry on digging about this um because I think that <laughs> so many people so many people will identify with 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 that situation of you know being in the wrong place in the wrong career and um what made you take the leap then what was like that do you have like sort of like a moment where you decided to go for it yeah um yes <laughs> it was definitely it was a weird one because like I said it was something I've been thinking about for a long time but thinking about something and doing something about it is very very different and so the practicalities of the things like having a mortgage now like it wasn't just me paying rent like I literally had this huge loan that I you know so mm. weighing up the kind of practicalities with that with my kind of passion and desire to just like go for it and quit there were a few different things honestly like part, part of it was my health so I needed to have surgery for the for endometriosis mm. that I've been diagnosed with and in order to do that I had health insurance through my employer so mm. on a very practical level at the moment in women's health and for endometriosis specifically I now run a support group so there's people who I kind of you know help through that process now but um at the time and still now it would have taken about two years to get the surgery and at that point like being in pain every day it was becoming like it was unbearable basically so it was sort of like stay in this job that isn't really serving me knowing that I want to leave but I have health insurance or leave go into the NHS system and wait for two years and so on a very practical level 
I kind of felt like I had to make that choice for my health. And so mm. that was kind of one of the first things where I was like, why is it that I have to choose between being in a really terrible situation and being in another really terrible situation? Like, why is it that that's the case? And then sort of diving into that in more detail, speaking to more people who had experienced that and trying to really understand that. That was the first thing. And that really like lit a fire inside me because I was like, this is a joke that the this the situation is so bad that it's okay for women to just be dismissed, not listened to, turned away with painkillers. Mm. I know women who have had organs removed, like women have died. Like it's, it's really like something that people don't really appreciate. And this is just one condition. And it really, you know, that, that goes across so many things. And so I just felt like, why is it that that's the case? And there's a lot of reasons, which like we definitely can't cover now, but, you know, looking at historical reasons, lack of funding, lack of understanding, like all of these different things, lack, lack of innovation, lack of investment in all different levels, whether it's research, whether it's startups for solutions to these things. I just became like enamored at this whole thing. So like that that was just one thing that had really lit me up. And then truthfully, I was having some issues with my employer about the time off that I needed for surgery. And again, like I have a lot of respect for for the company and like, you know, I grew so much and I I don't regret any of it. But I think that it was just really getting to that stage where I, it was becoming like not feasible like I was literally yeah. like breaking down every day like my partner was like this can't really I don't know so yeah. it, it was almost this moment of thinking okay I'll have my surgery and then it's almost like I'm free so mm-hmm. I had my surgery and the day I came back after my two weeks I handed in my notice so it was one of those things where if that hadn't have happened I don't know whether I would have left sooner if you know what I mean and that's again yeah. why I'm so passionate about looking at it as like it's connected like you can't just be naive to the fact that you can just make a flippant decision I saved up about six months of buffer to cover things like my mortgage like getting those Mm. practical things covered so that I had the freedom ultimately Mm. and freedom was really the the real kind of drive behind my whole business and that for me is how I live my life now like freedom to me and that's what independence means to me that's like Mm. the foundation of my and that's kind of the message that I really try and give now to other people because if you don't have freedom like autonomy over your life choices over what you can do autonomy over your time like what are you doing (laughs) so I I think it was you know like it was a mix but yeah yeah, I always think that's why it's like you need to you need to have options like we need to Mm -hmm. have options at the moment women don't have options so it's like with anything you go and buy a pair of shoes Mm -hmm. you'll buy a hat whatever it is yeah we have options you don't have options whether it's with your work your health or your money or anything in life that's where I think the issue is really at the core and so yeah I love your holistic view of like this is all interconnected we're we're people (laughs) that you know if if the money's not coming in firstly if the health's not right what you know what are you doing you need to stop straight away and figure it out and you know heal yourself what and that's like mental health physical health whatever it is so important uh and then yeah work and money it's like we spend 80 maybe more time of our lives doing you know at work so if we don't like what we're doing and if we're not aligned then what the hell are you doing as well but I love all of this and I think that you you mentioned it earlier as well you kind of need a bit of to build that confidence and you know that creative confidence as well of going like I'm gonna make my own business I'm going to do my own project this is going to be a platform for you know to really align myself with and serve my purpose so can you get us a bit a bit of insight into what took you there like so obviously you had all these things but how did you build up the confidence like were there like pivotal moments there where you were like oh this was really important for me to take the leap yeah yeah, I mean, honestly, like through the whole process, like when I really was struggling with my mental health, like I lost, I lost my all my confidence, if I'm completely honest, like I really mm. kind of lost myself. And it wasn't just about like me struggling at work, it really became, oh my god, like, what the hell am I doing with my life? So mm. I feel like from that, having to build that back up, it's almost twofold, like on the one hand, you know, it's sad. <laughs> on the other mm. hand, I actually think it, it gave me the opportunity to like, build up almost like a new like it gave me the, it, not like the phoenix rising from the ashes I'm not gonna you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not <doing> that right. 
but it's almost like I'm very visual and like I kind of like see it as like you know you have this you have these opportunities and these experiences in life and that's what life is right like you have these things that happen you can't choose necessarily what happens right like everyone has a different experience in life and for me it was about okay what do I want but then also like what have I experienced and so for me now like as well as kind of working on myself and working on my confidence and really thinking okay but what do I actually enjoy like what are my passions what are my strengths like not even thinking about work or your career or, or money or health or anything just who I like me just as a person on this planet like what you know who am I really like really going deep and then building out from that I think what I've now learned and what I would say to other people is like and I say it in my sessions as well like when I do talks or whatever it's like you should embrace your Eunice I, I don't know if that makes sense but I always say embracing your Eunice because everyone is unique and I think we are very multifaceted right like we're not just like robots like cracking on around the world like we all have different experiences and we are all unique in that so that we can then bring those unique experiences and actually it's that authenticity and being able to voice your opinions and just being proud of who you are like your perspective is different your contributions are going to be different and it doesn't matter like who you're talking to I've always said like hierarchy has never really mattered to me and I know that that's not the same for everyone but everyone's human at the end of the day like whether you're a CEO whether you're an intern do you know what I mean like to me it doesn't matter who you are because ultimately nobody knows everything and actually that's what makes the world go around and I think that that's really beautiful and actually even though I'm more of an introvert which people always think that's crazy and people literally like laughed at me when I told them I was like working on my confidence and signed up to these courses because they were like what are you talking about you're like the most confident person we know I was like yeah on the face of it, I am. And it was like, I sort of built this veneer. And I think a lot of us do that, right? You sort of feel mm. like you have to show up a certain way. And like, I was, yeah. you know, the head of the agency. So I had to like, you know, mm. and I sort of like lent that. And once I sort of threw that to the side and started breaking that down and being like, okay, but what do I actually want to do? That was where my real confidence came out because it's like, mm. I don't really care anymore. I still definitely have times and moments, I'm not going to lie, where I'm like looking at what other people are doing. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, I'm just going to pack this all in. Like, what's the point? I think that's kind of natural. Like, we all do. to doubt what you're doing. That's healthy. <laughs> but I think we just have to remember, like, they're different. Like, everyone is different. So you're not competing with anyone else. You're yeah. only really competing yourself if at all and actually it shouldn't be about that like it should be about you doing whatever you want to do like contributing to the world and whatever fulfills you and that's different for everyone and that's also okay like focus on what you can do what you can bring to the world and that's where I think your confidence comes and when you're just doing something that is really like genuine like whatever it is you're showing up and you're not feeling even now like when I go to pictures I started just taking the pressure off and being like look I'm just gonna do me like I know what I'm doing and what I am bringing in the value that I can bring and since then like I've got way more success and I'm having way you know and so I think it's yeah. just about being really true to who you are and that's not in a cheesy way it's just take all this shit off you know like sorry I don't know if yeah. swear, but like just be you and go with it and no one knows everything you're going to figure out as you go along and that's the fun of it like I'm really enjoying exploring now as part of my business because I don't know you know like you mm. nothing is guaranteed in life and also nothing is permanent if you want to try something and it doesn't work out that's totally fine like that's what is character yeah. building and that's how you grow and you learn and that's how you ultimately get to a place where you are genuinely fulfilled and you're not having to like put your fake smile on so yeah. love that love that love the authenticity love that it's all about you know almost prototyping and experimenting in your life as well that's such like yeah a creative approach as well isn't it and I want to ask you when was the first time you realized you were creative oh my god I actually danced my whole life so one other thing I didn't mention before is I actually auditioned to be in the Royal Ballet when I was really young so I was a, ah. I did ballet from when I was I've done like I'm actually going to the TEDx women event soon I don't know when you're launching this but in oh. Saddle as well so last time I was there was when I was dancing on the stage so I was oh. always very like because there was a competition or something like it was a million years ago but that was always my like outlet like I was never I tried acting and you know I think when you're a kid you try all these different things and I could never really get into it with dancing I felt like it was this like you could just I don't know like you could just be someone but you didn't have there was no words involved and you didn't have yeah. to I never did the like 
all jazzy face thing. It was never that I was more like contemporary <laughs> and ballet. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was just like whether it was, I've also been very musical and like, mm. again, like my family, I was lucky that, you know, I had musicians, I guess, around me and that was always very encouraged. And so I don't know, like, I think I always just had it. And to be honest, like, I think I lost it a, a lot because working in creative agencies, I was always mm. told, oh, well, you're not a designer, like you're not the creator. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of, honestly, I think internalize that a lot and realize, okay, well, I guess I'm not. Now I'm a one woman agency. Okay. So like, I'm the designer, I'm the writer, <laughs> like I do everything. So I'm like, <laughs> screw you. But also, I don't know, like, I think now I'm actually really enjoying, like I've started doing salsa and I'm, I'm starting to get back into it. I'm going to start ballet. Again. I don't know. I think Wonderful. when you forget that and you don't like, I don't know. I think it's always like, what you want to do early on I do think there is some influence of that later on you know it's like that yeah before you think about job titles or salaries or you know what people think and what you really enjoy just on a really pure level I feel like there's something in that so yeah yeah what gives you joy and it's funny that you say that you know because that happens to a lot of people you know we're all creative we're all humans this is it's 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 human to be creative you you know uh, but it's obviously very linked to a job title or, you know, a, a certain type of output that we consider creative. But actually, you know, every time you you do anything around you, you're kind of creating things. You're, 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 you're impacting your reality. You're, so, yeah, I think it's we kind of need to get rid of that, those tags and those things that are so negative and, and, and make people be kind of detach themselves of that playful side because I think that that's that's what's beautiful you you were saying when you were talking about the dancing and stuff you were like lighting up and firing you clearly you can see <laughs> gives you a lot a lot of joy and it's about that isn't it um yeah you made me feel like I need to like speed up my starting dance again because I never think about yeah. it like it's I don't know that's why I loved it this is amazing because I think it does make you just like stop it and that's I'm all about just self-reflection like mm. you should be able to kind of pause and be like oh actually maybe I do want to try something new or whatever it is and that's fine and I totally agree I think creativity is so unique and even like you know when I used to do science and now when I work with scientists or speak with scientists or doing things in like the women's health space that is creative like to be able yeah. to kind of do these things like you have to have a mind where you're challenging and you're questioning I don't know like imagine I, imagination I, you have to like exactly. question yeah, yeah yeah inquisitive like exactly. curiosity all these things are so human and so yeah. important yeah no it's 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 really important that we destigmatize this creative title and creative things because it's all no, and it's all very linked with confidence isn't it it's like you oh I'm a creative so I therefore I do this and and then you know uh, it's, because it's so intrinsic it's so personal as well that yeah that I mean I think side right I think honestly at the end of the day it should be about like open-mindedness like because I don't know just at the end of the day who who cares if I don't know it's like people get so hung up I think on like other people's way of mm-hmm. creativity or, you know and what that means and you know like yeah. as long as you're being kind and you're not hurting anyone like crack on <laughs> you know like have fun. be silly it's okay. <laughs> enjoy your life love it have you got any advice for someone who might be struggling with their creative confidence or who kind of want to start their own thing? Any any tips, any toolkits, anything that you want to share? Yeah, oh, I have lots now. <laughs> but I think, I don't know, I think my main ones, like whether it's in your career or whether it's like starting a business, at the end of the day, I think you should just do what brings you joy. I think this world is full of a lot of pain. Life is full of a lot of pain. It can be very easy to focus on that and get caught up in that. And, you know, I get it. Like I've been there, I understand it. And I I feel that, but actually like you only live once and like (laughs) you should do what brings you joy and you shouldn't settle. You should pursue whatever it is that you really want to do. You should try things out. Like we've talked about, be curious, like put yourself out there even if it feels scary like when I first started my business I literally had to start from scratch I had no reputation I had no personal brand I had no business brand I had nothing and the way I've done that is by putting myself out there putting my thoughts my ideas my opinions and yes that was terrifying and still is scary at times but you just have to go for it and like 
you're never going to please everyone. And actually that's not the point. And so it's like mm. bringing back to like, what brings you joy, ignore the haters and people who aren't going to get, because not everyone's going to get it. And again, like that's what makes the world a beautiful place because you don't have everyone doing the same thing and how boring would that be? So like do what brings you joy, like first and foremost, and really think about that. Like be really honest with yourself. Like I also am doing a wine course and I have dreams of like opening a wine bar and all these other things. And that's great. And like, yeah. I should do that too. And it's, you know, you don't have to put yourself in a box. You can also do all of these things that you want to do, but ultimately your life is for living. And so you should mm. do like what brings you joy. You should know your why. I think this mm. is a really big one, but be open to the how, particularly in business. So like, why are you doing what you're doing? And that's for mm. anything. If you're in a job and you're questioning, oh, do I want to stay? Or maybe I want to do something else. Or do I want to get a promotion? Or do I want to, you know, change industries? Or do I want to do something completely different? Do I want to start my own business? That's amazing. But like, why are you doing that? Mm. And I think being open to the how is is really helpful because it, it stops you limiting and put, again like putting yourself in a box because actually again you don't know everything like and that's what mm. I'm doing now that was the approach that I took and that's led me to some incredible opportunities that's led me to this conversation right here by not saying oh I'm just this is all I do like mm. I've been open and it's trusting in your ability to make it happen like whatever that is and just really kind of knowing that you can trust the process and you will ultimately get there. And actually, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. You can kind of try something else. But making sure that you're doing something that feels really true to you and is really authentic and it's something that you're really genuinely passionate about, I think is super, super important. Trusting your gut is like a huge one. I think a lot of times we think we're, you know, we're meant to do things, whether it was like me, you know, doing medicine. Honestly, I don't think I ever really wanted to be a doctor. And if I think about it now, I'm like, thank God, because <laughs> like it, that just wouldn't have fitted me as a person. But I think mm. sometimes you go, you do these things because people are telling you what to do or you, you want to please people or you, you know, your parents, whatever it might be, just trust in your gut, whether it's with people, opportunities, whether it's in your personal life, whether your professional life, you know, like you have have a niggling feeling inside you I really believe it and whatever that is just just be mindful of that and be tuned into that and if it doesn't feel right it's also good to say no like people used to always you know there are a lot of people I used to work with throughout my career who never said no and I'd be like I can tell you don't want to do this like so again like just being confident with that like trusting your gut and doing what you want at the end of the day and being proud of that and like honestly just being kind to yourself and like prioritizing you because if you put too much pressure on it you know if you don't take that time to kind of reflect and just check in with what you're doing like what's the point you know like you there's no point in just sitting there being on your laptop or you know you shouldn't be on autopilot you should be doing what you want to do whatever nurtures your soul and then my final thing I would say which I always say is I really believe that true power like your unique power comes from turning your knowledge into action so it's all well and good like thinking about things or you know learning about something new or being curious but you have to do something about it so if you're thinking mm. about something whether it's a different job or whether it's a business or anything in your life you have to do something so even if it's a little tiny step like small changes really add up to big things and there's a ripple effect and I don't know if you can do one thing after listening to this if you're still at this point listening like just do one little thing like take action do something to move it in the right direction I promise you the more you start doing things that feel genuine to yourself, like you will never look back. Oh, I love, I love everything. Thank you so much. This, <laughs> I'm sure it, this has been like really helpful for, for people. I know it is because, you know, we really went deep and kind of, um, yeah, just so many actionable things as well there that are so useful and helpful for someone who's stuck and overwhelmed with like the task sometimes. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. No, thank you. Honestly, like I'm I'm so inspired by you and everything that you're doing. And even just like holding space for these conversations, like creative oh. confidence is such a, I don't know. I just love it, the concept, the approach. And I think it should be spoken about more. So thank you. Like, I'm so honored oh. to have even been like a part of this. So no, oh. thank you. I hope it's helpful for someone in some way. But no, it was really, it was my pleasure. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. It's It's been a real pleasure. And yeah, right back at you. Lots of love. <laughs> <laughs>